Now remember that an inequality has a whole lot of solutions. For example, the inequality negative 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 5, which looks like this on a number line, has all of these numbers in between negative 3 and 5 as solutions. So negative 2 is a solution, 4 is a solution, 2 and 19 20 thirds is a solution, and so on. The collection of all possible solutions is called the solution set of the inequality. Now, equations have a solution set as well, but it's kind of a boring set. It's only got one thing in it. For inequalities, there are lots of solutions, so its solution set is interesting. In order to describe the solution set, we're going to introduce a new tool. The new tool that we're introducing is called interval notation. Now, the word interval just describes one of these line segments in a number line, something that looks like this. It has a left end and a right end, and it contains all the numbers in between, both the integers and the rational numbers, and all the rest of the numbers that we're going to talk about later. Interval notation is just kind of a cartoon version of this number line picture, which means that when you want to write down interval notation, it's often best to start with the graph on the number line. If I wanted to represent this picture in interval notation, I would write a parenthesis the number negative 3, a comma, the number 5, and a square bracket. Now I'm going to break this down for you. Negative 3 is the left end. It's the smallest number involved in my interval doesn't matter whether it has an open dot or a closed dot. It's just the smallest number. 5, then, is the right end. It's the largest number. So, so much for the numbers, then. The round bracket is a number that's not included. Just like the open dot is a number that's not included. The square bracket is a number that is included, just like the closed dot is a number that is included. So there are two things to keep track of. We always write the smaller number first, then the larger. And then the other thing to keep track of is the shape of the brackets. If the inequality symbol is strictly less than or strictly greater than, then we have an open dot, and we'll use the round bracket, the parentheses. If the inequality symbol is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then we have a filled in dot, and we use the square bracket. We call these round brackets. It's the same key on the keyboard as the parentheses, but it's a different idea. And we call these square brackets. Round bracket, empty dot, strictly less than, strictly greater than. Square bracket, filled in dot, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. This is one of those things that isn't that way for a reason. We just all have to agree on the same symbol, and that's the symbol that we agree on. Now, I told you that this picture shows an interval. 
This picture does not show an interval. Why not? It has a gap in it. If we have a picture with a gap in it, and we really, really want to describe it in interval notation, well, notice that this picture is made up of two intervals with a gap between them. We can describe the two intervals, right? This is close bracket negative 4, 2 with a round bracket. And the second interval is round bracket 1, 3 with a round bracket. And then we want to put them together. To put them together, we use a U-shaped symbol. This symbol means union. And it just means put these sets together. So because there's a gap, this is not one interval. It's two intervals put together. And to put them together, the tool that we use is this union symbol.